Hi again, uh, Gwen Bookman, PO102, United States Government. We are ready to begin. As you remember from my last recording, we are going to begin our study of U.S. government with Module 1, beginning on September the 2nd. And if you recall, Module 1 is going to begin an exploration of the Constitution. And in that module, we'll not only look at the Constitution, we'll also look at the structure of the government, beginning with our three branches. So let's begin first talking about the Constitution. Uh, as you know, through Chapter 2, which is the chapter you will be reading in preparation for our gathering together on September the 2nd, we began our government by a discord with the English government and the perception that the monarchy was imposing on the people in a way that was not tolerable. This, of course, led to the Declaration of Independence, which led the colonists to establish their own governmental system. And because they were so concerned about the power at the federal level, the monarchy, they created what came to be known as a confederation. And in chapter two, we will also look at the Articles of Confederation and some of the limitations that it posed. Ultimately, that form of government was not the way to go. And then we led to the Constitutional Convention, which led to the Constitution as we have come to know it now. What we will do as we look at Chapter 2 and as we begin to study what is it that underpins this system called United States government, there will be several external sources that I will refer you to in addition to the text. I would like to bring to your attention that your text has at the back an appendix. And in that appendix are several documents that we will also be required to discuss, to know about, and to literally have it also serve as the underpinnings of the system that we have today. For myself, I like to keep my pocket constitution. I think uh, those of us who really like to look at the various things that are going on in our modern world, Many of them have their guidance in this document, and so I don't anticipate each of you having your own copy of the Constitution, but I do want you to make sure that you are familiar with the appendix, and your Constitution is Appendix B. The Declaration of Independence is Appendix, appendix A. So do make sure, again, before we gather on September the 2nd, that you have uh, at least perused those documents, Appendix A and Appendix B, and specifically in Appendix B, the Constitution, I want you to be familiar with the preamble, and I'd like you to at least have some understanding of what is covered in Articles 1, Articles 2, and Article 3. Those three articles, one, two, and three, give you a lot of information about our three branches of government. One of the things I want to say in this first uh, mini lecture is that American government is a broad system of study. And in the seven weeks that we're together, we're going to have to be very judicious in honing in on the ones that are most important. And there will be many of them that we will simply skim over. One of the things uh, I want to make sure is that when you leave this course, while you may not have delved deeply into many of the areas that are important, you will be familiar with them, you will know what the terms mean, and most important, you will know where to go to continue your learning. One of the things that I have as my philosophy of teaching is that my major task for you is to hopefully ignite the love of learning 
and then beyond that to give you the tools that can allow you to continue your lifelong learning after you leave this class. Speaking again about uh, underlying documents, we will not again have time to delve deeply into them, but they're also very interesting uh, papers that are called the Federalist Papers that um, help us understand the debate that was going on when the Constitution came into being. The Federalist Papers supported the Constitution, and there are several uh, numbers of the papers that give you various perspectives on how they presented what those parcels of the Constitution were going to do and what they were not going to do. The other one is the Anti-Federalist Papers. These were people who did not believe that the Constitution should be uh, structured as it was. And in the Anti-Federalist Papers, there are also clear debates about what the Constitution was going to do and what it was not going to do. We will have no time to go deeply into either of these, but we will explore them. And again, when you leave U.S. government, I want you to be able to talk intelligently with your colleagues and with others about what these papers stood for. I do want you to know also that there is terminology in any subject that is very important and is at the underpinning of what that discipline is about. And with U.S. government, there is no difference. So at the end of each chapter, you will have a glossary, a series of terms that are terribly important to the understanding of what that chapter covered. So what I would like you to do is to make sure in chapter two that you look at the glossary at the back of the chapter and that you begin to be familiar with all of the terms. I've already talked to you about the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. I've spoken to you about the three branches of government, Article One, Article Two, and Article Three. We will look at the Bill of Rights. I talked to you about the Declaration of Independence and its importance to how we began as a country uh, in the New World. Uh, it'll go even further. In the constitutional debates, there were compromises that had to be made. So you will learn about the Great Compromise. You'll also learn about the Three-Fifths Compromise, natural rights. There are terms that will help you understand the concepts that are critical to our coverage of chapter two. So I will begin to structure your readings. I will guide you to the things in the chapters that are important. And most of all, I will help you when we are in our synchronous sessions, make sense of what it is that you have read. If some of it is not clear to you in your own exploration. But again, as I indicated in my welcome uh, video and as I indicated in my um, in, uh, uh, video that talked to you about uh, your orientation to online learning, we are partners in this. And in order for you to do your part, you must attend to the guidance that I give prior to our synchronous sessions so that when you come into that space, we are working with the material. We are digesting it, we are debating it, and we are dialoguing about it. I will not be repeating in a lecture format the material that you are to be familiar with and to have read before the uh, synchronous sessions. So this is the prelude that I want to give you for uh, our beginning on September the 2nd. Uh, your reading should be at least a perusal of chapter two, an exploration of appendix A and B. I want you to be familiar 
with the glossary. What are some of the terms? And this chapter, this text, I should say, is wonderful in its structure because you will have at the end of each chapter not only the glossary of terms that are important, you will also have a summary of what that chapter covered. So while you will not be able to get the essence uh, of it without minimally reading the summary, you will get the meat of it in more details by reading the chapter itself. So with that, I look forward to seeing you as we begin our exploration of U.S. government by looking at and exploring this wonderful document that has endured through the years and that provides the underpinning of how our system works. See you in the Zoom.